our site then you can uh, listen and uh, you can inquire about it sir yes sir yes sir. Uh, mr prabram sir prabram sir Hey sir, are you there, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yes, bro. Ram, uh, you can start. Hello. Hello, bro. Ram, can you hear? Hello, can you hear me, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, is it bro? Ram? Sir, bro. Ram, sir. Hello, bro. Ram, sir. हेलो प्रोग्राम सर ये और कटा है सर सर कैन यू हियर हियर मी नाउ यस सर यस सर यू आर ऑडिबल सर सर प्लीज स्टार्ट द सेशन सर सर प्लीज सर यस हेलो प्रोग्राम 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 कैन यू हियर प्रोग्राम जबीन सर कैन यू हेयर मी फोन बनी चलेगा जी फोन बनी चलेगा हेलो हेलो अरुण सर आई एम आडी बोल यस सर यस 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 सर मैं कह रही हूं प्रोग्राम प्रोग्राम ओके सर सर अवेलेबल सर सर यस यस प्रोग्राम कैन यू हियर हेलो ऑडियो प्रोग्राम प्रोफाइल यार टुर्टिकुलर से We are having two eminent uh, chair chairpersons over here. Chairperson number one is Dr. T. G. Loganathan, Associate Professor, R. M. K. T. G. Chennai. So he has completed his B. E. Mechanical in the year 1998, and he has completed his M. E. in Computer Design in the year 2008, and he has completed in the completed his P. H. D. in Mechanical in the year June 2017. So his area of research in his P. H. D. is a, a flexural for performance of glass fiber reinforced plastic. on the exposure of a cyclic load automobile leaf spring application so he is having a experience in the teaching from uh, various colleges from the year 1999 so he has implemented very various uh, teaching methodologies such as tutorial based le uh, learning project based tutorial based learning crossword based le uh, learning uh, and many things so he has been published uh, enormous amount of uh, uh, published articles he has also published a uh, patents so as of now he has been filed four patents out of which four has been published in a journal and in progress there is a, a journal he also uh, developing new products uh, such as safety helmets using gfrp uh, ceiling fan pots using gfrp pick and place robot arm skateboard using nfrp mold casting so he has uh, one awards and membership from best faculty 
award in the year 2016 by TCS, and he is a membership lifetime member in the ISTE. So I welcome you, sir, on behalf of Ramco Institute of Technology. The next personality what we have uh, today here for the session is uh, Dr. P. Suresh Kumar, uh, who is an associate professor from Ramco Institute of Technology. He has completed his uh, B.E. in Mechanical Engineering from Madurai Kamaraj University in the year 2002. Then he has completed his M.Tech Metallurgy and Metallurgy Engineering from IIT Madras 2007. Then he has completed his Ph.D. in Mechanical in the year in the year 2019. So he is having a vast ex experience in this uh, professional career since 2007. He has published more number of research articles and uh, conference publications. So he is working in this uh, campus since it has been inception. I welcome you for this uh, session, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So now I request participation number, paper ID number 019. I repeat again. Are you present there? Yes, sir. I am here. Okay. You can share your screen, sir. Now. Okay, sir. Visible to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can proceed. Sir. Yes, sir. You okay. can proceed. Okay, sir. So, first of all, thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity, Ramco Institute of Technology. So, I'm going to present an analytical study of additive manufacturing versus metal injection molding for industrial manufacturing. So, these both are the most renowned manufacturing technologies in the industries. So 3D printing and metal injection molding. So these are the parts, different parts. Like in first picture, uh, you can see that there are hand tools, some mechanical components, and gears are there. So these are the manufactured components uh, are manufactured by metal injection molding as well as 3D printing. So it having vast capability uh, it, uh, to the manufacturing of the different components. Then coming to the metal injection molding. So metal injection molding is uh, introduced by Dr. Raymond E. West in 1917. And uh, it took around 10 years to get a commercial platform as uh, to get and widely accepted by the industries. Uh, it facilitated the fabrication, manufacturing of the solid, uh, solid metal parts in the mass production of the similar component. For this technology, the raw material is used as a metal and the binder, which is polymer. The material metal is used as a low speed steel, stainless steel, iron and high speed steel as well. The binders are polyethylene, polypropylene are the different binders and natural waxes and stearic acid are used. In this metal injection molding, basically this is the a manufacturing process which is widely used for uh, manufacturing the identical components which having similar properties there are uh, mainly uh, four wide processes in it that is mixing injection debinding and sintering which uh, i would like to uh, get to you idea about in further slide so as earlier we discussed that there are the raw component or the raw material is metal powder and binder so for the whole process it is uh, the uh, chronological order in the it's shown in the slide then it, this uh, uh, metal powder and binder is followed by the mixing in the mixer which having uh, uh, properties to mix the which can mix the metal powder and binder, then followed by blending or granulation, 
which can facilitate to mixing the binder to the metal powder and then it converted into solid pellets and finally we get in the first phase that is mixing the feed stock which we are going to feed to the injection molding in the injection molding this is the uh, this is the machine and uh, this is the screw in the the feed stock is go going to feed via screw in the mold the at the high pressure as well as temperature with it and forming the when the part is injected after cooling and all the processes which is followed then we are finally getting green part which having certain binder material stick to it so to, we have to remove the binding binding material then uh, there are two treatments can be done earlier we can also follow the water binding for that the green part is supposed to be placed in water or any solvent and then followed by the thermal binding thermal thermal binding is basically the heat treatment process or the low low heat treatment process in that the binder is removed via evaporation and uh, there are around 40% of the space, empty spaces by volumes are remaining into it and uh, followed to this process we are getting brown parts so and again there are certain amount of the binder is remaining so the sintering process is followed for that and binding process uh, from the uh, brown part we have to given to uh, kept into the inert gases as in sintering process the inert uh, gases uh, inert gases are there and the temperature in the sintering is around 85% of the melting point of the metal powder and uh, the after following all these uh, processes finally we are getting final well finished mim component then coming to the 3d printing basically 3d printing is the three dimensional object uh, deposition uh, layer by layer additive manufacturing process in that the uh, the new prototype or the unique prototype uh, manufactured or the unique uh, less number of quantities are manufactured by uh, with the help of the CAD models. The techniques are used in the 3D printing are stereolithographic FDM, uh, that is fixed deposition, uh, fixed deposition modeling, SLS, SLM, etc. The alloy is uh, the metals, uh, the material which is used for the 3D printing is. Uh, alloys of the aluminium nickel cobalt titanium for the different industries the different alloys are preferred for the example in alloy for the aluminium alloys which are used in aerospace industries as nickel alloys having capability to resist high corrosion so it is used in the automobile industries or the industries which having uh, high treatment processes that's why it is also called as an additive manufacturing process and rapid prototyping so this is for a simple example of the uh, uh, stereolithographic process that how the symbol how the uh, 3d printing is simple when it comes uh, from the starting level then uh, the 3d model is obtained in the stl format that is stereolithographic format and the 3D printing software, or uh, this is basically slice is the 3D model software which slice, which is basically transferring the and this G codes are sent to 3D printer and accordingly the uh, which is transferring coming to the comparative analysis of the some parameters uh, and uh, in that for the yes sir Okay, okay, continue. Hello, continue, continue. Okay, okay. 3D printer, there are so many cheaper price printers are available, so it is depends on us that for which process we're gonna opt. As 3D printers is more uh, having less initial investment compared to when coming to 
part cost of the tools is very vital role in the variety of variety of variety and consistent when it comes to the speed then uh, uh, for the mass production and for the mass production in the induction molding uh, the speed is faster compared to the 3d printing here in the and can be this uh, this process and then be text to the in the uh, within a minute but, uh, the 3 d printing it took some time so products you need are going to be manufactured so if the number of units are more than the cost of uh, cost per product printing the cost is having is decreasing in the and similar cost or it is easy to change the reference point and change the design according to the product uh, customer required. more than that no any layer by layer of the 3d print layer this is the indian molding here it is more Uh, well surface and wide range of the texture or the pattern but in three years printing is around 31 percent has been uh, takes place around in the future in future 21 per percent for the electrical sector and respectively 14 percent 10 percent for the consumer and service sector these are the individual sector for which how much the trending of the 3d printing or how much the uh, sector market cap has been captured by the 3d printing this is the economical uh, economical uh, economical increment from 2014 to the market uh, value in the uh, in the recent years and upcoming years for the 3d printing for the metal injection reading, this is uh, the graph for the whole world. This is from 2018 uh, to 2026. In the first, uh, the North America having high cap uh, by the metal injection molding, followed by Europe and ASEAN countries. So this is about the metal injection molding. And uh, for uh, opting for uh, both the process having their uh, respective or their own uh, special specialities having their uh, respective applications for uh, having a low quality uh, and a complex part manufacturing one should have to go for the 3d printing and for uniform strength and uh, flexibility and mass production they has to go with the uh, metal injection molding as uh, the also the different factors like jaw is also and so when once it 
Yes, sir. All. Thank you so much. Hello, sir. Am I audible to you? मिस्टर मनोज विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू दीज टू मेथड ऑफ मेकिंग प्रोडक्ट्स राइट Yes, sir. and uh, can you tell me how you can improve the surface finish in 3D printing? Is there is any mode uh, by which you can uh, improve the surface finish? Uh, sir, for improving the surface uh, surface finish, uh, uh, we can opt for uh, making the thin layer or the as uh, already the 3D printing having. For the microstructure in it. Okay, okay. Very less thickness, so we can go okay. for the nanotechnology. So, how about the on the product uh, for the if the design, uh, if you consider about the metal injection molding, then if the component of the high, we are ma manufacturing the, the identical again. component. So the time the same but 3d printing having different application it is works on the unique prototyping complex designing which can not be done for this uh, small component or the uh, easy component it can be done from 30 minutes 1 hours what is the in your work what is the new thing which you are going to tell uh, from this comparison Is there is any novelty, sir? Actually, uh, yes, analytical study because I actually I have seen in the small, uh, uh, small, uh, small any any non-recognized company that people uh, think about the uh, actually. I was also finding I find it difficult that uh, choosing for the uh, once I had a, a, a question. So, so I personally this, believe this that uh, you should extend your uh, um, investigation on these two. Hello. Sir. No, 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 no. The analysis itself, you have to extend to uh, deeper uh, version, and you have to come out with uh, uh, very detailed statistics because you are giving a only base level uh, of uh, differences between or uh, the similarities between uh, these two methods. Thank you. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, Jari, sir. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yes, sir. I'm not getting. Can you repeat? Yes, sir. Printing component is. Do you ensure that you are? Sorry, sir. Can you repeat the question? Printing component is. Yes, sir. All crystalline. Yes, sir. Due to interruption, I again. Crystalline uh, structure. Yes, sir. Sir, please can you. Can you add your my question? Please start. Repeat. The question is, how do you ensure that your structure is a polycrystalline structure? The structure is polycrystalline structure. Yes, sir. I can. Can you hear you? Yes, Manoj? sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. I can repeat the question. Okay. The How question is. Manoj, I. Manoj, are you there? Hello. Yes, sir. I am here. That is the question to you. It is not available. No problem, sir. We will. Uh, 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 we'll continue the next uh, next person next. Uh, yes, sir. The question is, how do you ensure the structure is a solid? Mr. Harshad, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Program sir, are you there? Mr. Harshad, are you there? Hi. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, sir, I'm sir. there. Slow down, sir. Yes. Okay. Yes, 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 sir. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Am I audible to all? Prabhuram, sir. Yes, 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 are Yeah, I, I, I would design and analysis of uh, load uh, truck load body for low commercial vehicle platform. Yeah, uh, uh, these are my uh, present contents of my presentation. Uh, then what is the uh, uh, basically my project is uh, related with the truck body segment or truck vehicles uh, commercial vehicle segments so automobile industry as you all know is one of the most innovative in the in totally industry area so lot of research and development activities are there uh, in the automotive sector so body, uh, the, my project is related with the design of this load body and we have to analyze this it for the static structural purpose so what is the load body the load body is the main part of the structure which is placed on the chassis of the truck which carries the entire entire load of uh, entire payload and which is then uh, held with the required mounting arrangement uh, arrangement so this is uh, the problem statement so i have to design a, a 5.18 meter deck length of truck load body which is which, which should be of high deck type of uh, uh, load body for the low commercial vehicle platform with uh, 3300 mm wheel base and for non slipper coach cup and also i have to perform a static structural analysis or strength analysis of that design the load body and make sure that uh, um, and it we should uh, analysis it for uh, basically uh, uh, based upon the von Mises stress criteria so for that uh, I have proposed these using then, then CAD modeling and assembly of all properties is done, and then analysis, uh, static analysis is done using, using ANSI software, and then uh, I have made some conclusions. So these are uh, all, uh, all my objectives of my projects. So we have to understand the rules and regulations which are given by Central Motor Vehicle Rules and ARN. According to that, we have to design the load body. Then we have to uh, generate the geometrical uh, modeling using CRIO modeling software and design the parts and assembly of it and then we have to develop a finite element model using an ANSI software and then uh, we have to suggest the suitable changes in the two different models uh, after performing the analysis on them so this uh, this slide uh, according to that I have designed the load body. <laughs> so these are the design inputs which I have given uh, so that I can design the load body. Uh, it should be uh, its length uh, uh, and then it was and also for the so according to that I have to design the load body. So load body consists of mainly two parts, means different sub assemblies and then load body mounting. So I have to design for these different sub assemblies. So I have designed the four panel assembly, which consists 
mountains so first of all i come come with my material selection process for different parts uh, according to the um, and, uh, according to operating conditions and availability of manufacturers and different suppliers i have uh, selected different materials for different parts so this side represents my different The next was is the uh, side underwrite protection device, which is generally used for the uh, uh, um, pedestrian safety and other small vehicles. For that, to refer to the IS 1368-1999 standards, and then. I which I have SVP I use, I have mentioned it here or, or on the right, right hand side. For this uh, SVPD, uh, the L-shaped frame members and C-channels and outer angle, uh, which are available standardly, they are used to design this SVPD. These SVPD are directly attached with the uh, load body uh, load bodies uh, to connect SVPD with load body. Then the U-bolts. These U-bolts are used as a fastener for fastening the cross bearers to the chassis frame. You, the load body, when it is attached to the chassis, it is uh, then uh, packed, uh, connected with these U-bolts. These U-bolts contain hex nuts and plate wash sheets and wood runners, runners as shown in figure. Then these are other load body mountings, cleat side marker lens and hooks. These are used for the packaging and other various, to perform various other uh, functions. These are also some channel reinforcements which are used for the brackets and other sheet metal which is there of the load body. Then these are the specification illustrated whatever the load body I have designed using the design inputs and other things. This is the this is my specification of the load body. Here length, width, height, uh, the wheel base and overall mass of the load body is given. The frame for this uh, frame used is ladder type having a frame with riveted uh, bolted cross members then i have to perform i have to after designing these various parts i have to make geometrical modeling of each parts and then assemble it using the pure software so after performing this i have made a 3d model of this using the creo modeling software so entire 3d model is uh, ready as shown here below then the strength analysis of this design load body is performed using analysis software. So in order to study the uh, effects of loads acting on the load body, the one of the basic uh, criteria is uh, we have to analyze it at the static condition. So we have to perform the uh, static analysis. And in other, also, <coughs> the to make the body safe according to one my stress criteria, we have to uh, uh, we have to stress the uh, we have to analyze the load body for one message stress criteria so according to that these are these are the details which are uh, which, uh, these are the details when i conducted the stress analysis uh, we, here total two designs we have evaluated first design is evaluated and the strength analysis is done some design modifications are done in first design in order to reduce the stresses 
and then second model is done and again a strength analysis is done. So here two designs are evaluated. Here the analysis type is linear static analysis and the, for analysis method here we use inertia relief analysis. So these are some uh, some, of, uh, some critical assumptions I have made here and then I have performed the strength analysis. So the strength analysis of load body. So it is the most uh, basic analysis type and we have to uh, we have to uh, take some response what how the body is reacted when the loads are acting on the load body so these are the details or some descriptive uh, description about the inertia relief analysis it is nothing but it is a simple uh, inertia relief analysis is nothing but you know, here as a basic assumption is made that the structure is in static condition or static equilibrium even though it is not considered and the inertia here the applied loads which are there are then balanced by a set of transitional and rotational accelerations generated automatically by software. So here the inertia relief analysis method is used. So in order to perform this inertia relief, some basic loading conditions are there. So here the mainly load bodies are uh, uh, evaluated or analyzed for so overload conditions only. So uh, according to the loads acting on the truck load body at front axle and rear axle, uh, the loading conditions are calculated. So for FAEW, uh, front axle weight, rear axle weight, and total gross vehicle and payload. So all these loads are calculated for the rated condition. And then it is uh, calculated for overloading condition. Then this uh, this slide gives us uh, about uh, this, discuss about the finite element modeling done for the load body. Here, <coughs> the body is then uh, prepared for the meshing, uh, successfully prepared for the meshing and then it is meshed using the brick and tetrahedron elements and the boundary conditions are applied at the front axle and the rear axle, uh, front axle and rear axle tire locations uh, with upward, uh, in upward direction uh, uh, distributed along the two long runners of them. Then after performing the mesh, uh, after performing the mesh, the different mesh quality parameters are also checked because uh, we have to ensure that the good mesh, generated mesh is good or not. So for that, different mesh quality parameters are also checked. They are uh, within the good uh, limits and we can say that we have proper or good meshing. Then we can uh, further process for the results. So after that, so this is the load volume design model number one. In model number one, what is there uh, here? engine uh, to maintain sufficient gap between load body and gearbox we have to uh, we have to make a cutout at the front side of the load body as shown here uh, here. here we can say uh, the, we have to make the cutout and also we have to remove the four gussets for setting member at the front side also we have to reduce the long runner range so in design num model number one we have this uh, kind of modifications done so after performing this modification we have analyzed design number one so this is this uh, this image uh, depicts the one message stress plot for the load body model number one. So here we can say that uh, the regions of highly stressed area are uh, represented in red circle. So these are the high stresses, higher one message stresses uh, for um, actually for this typical location. So we have marked these regions as a critical regions. So here we have to reduce this stress value. in order to make the load body safe from the one assist stress criteria. So necessary design modifications like cutout providing some reinforcements brackets, reinforcement bracket uh, using E34 and basically 46 materials like that of things. So we have to make in, for this cutout also some reinforcement brackets are also less. And after this making these um, reinforcement brackets and cutouts and some, some another mod design modifications, the model number two is then geometrical model number two is done hello sir hello sir huh? uh, one minute uh, sorry for the interruption can you go to conclusion sir we yeah yeah yes can you go to conclusion sir? yes yeah so after uh, after that i have analyzed them for design model two so from design model one and two in uh, design number two the results which are one message stresses which are achieved are below the uh, yield stress limit of the uh, material condition so from the one message stress criteria the so model number two is set and we can uh, release it from the design point. So this is my conclusion. So after creating the finite element model, structure analysis of load body is done. And for design number one, the observed structures are where high below the material element. So we have to uh, modify this design for, for 
modify this design and then the second design is done and uh, second model is prepared and in that second model after the analysis the results one minus stresses are below will limit so we can say that the model number two is safe from one minus stress criteria thank you sir these are the references i have used yes sir thank you sir uh, logan sir logan sir, sir. Yes. yeah yeah i am in the line you, you can proceed sir. Uh, Sir, I have one question. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. uh, can you uh, tell me uh, about this mesh quality? Uh, how you did in ANSYS? Yeah. First, first I have imported the model in ANSYS software. So different uh, means the geometry or geometry parameters was not completely uh, means the tick mark was not there for the geometry value because lot of sheet metal parts and different parts are there so uh, different trial and errors uh, uh, trial and error methods uh, first i have i have mesh automation i have done automation so in automation some quality parameters were good but some other parameters were not good so so according to that some trial and error methods i have used uh, uh, some on some cases i have applied for the mesh sizing or relevance according to that or some uh, on some uh, phases i have uh, made some uh, si uh, in, uh, in, uh, spare influencing and then uh, some trial and errors i have uh, some achieved some good quality of mesh so you have not used any standard method only by trial and error you have achieved that uh, mesh quality yes yes okay fine thank you uh, sir gulkarni sir i have one question how you how you did uh, grit independent study for your analysis sir grit independent study yeah grit independent study that's what uh, grit independent study in the sense that you are first initially you have missed some element size yes yes you have change your element size maybe reduced or increased whatever may be then again you reduce the element size at one point of time the element size one element size subsequent element size give you same result that is what yes, we are refining it and finally we are concluding it is this element is optimum element for this analysis that is what grit independent study have you done it yeah means uh, i have measured the uh, body for uh, around 7 to 8 times so exactly i am not uh, exactly not the same manner as you told but uh, some like uh, similar kind of things i have done Okay, okay, okay. Then it is okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Gulkarni. So now I call upon Mr. Muhammad Taha for your presentation. So are you there, Mr. Muhammad? Mr. Muhammad? Hello. Mr. Mohammed, are you there? Uh, Mohammed, are you there, Mr. Mohammed? <laughs> Uh, yes, Mohammed, you can uh, share your screen, Mohammed. Program. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Mr. Mohammed. So, Mr. Mohammed, can you hear me? Uh, we will go to next uh, presentation, sir. Uh, and, uh, last, he will join, I think. So, uh, okay, sir. Uh, okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Abdul Latif. Mr. Abdul Latif, are you there? Mr. Abdul Latif. Yes, sir. I'm available. Can you hear uh, me? Now, now you can share your screen. You can start the presentation. Okay, so wait a 
ओके 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 मीन टाइम पार्टिसिपेंट आई रिक्वेस्ट टू काइंडली म्यूट योर ऑडियो एंड वीडियो एंड देन देयर इज अ इंस्ट्रक्शन ऑलरेडी दे गिवन 8 मिनट्स विल गिव अ बेल वन बेल रिंग दैट इज योर वार्निंग टाइम देन नेक्स्ट आफ्टर आई मीन एट 10 मिनट्स 10 मिनट्स विल गिव अ फाइनल बेल सो प्लीज प्रेजेंट योर कोर पार्ट ऑफ द योर वर्क सर कैन आई स्टार्ट माय प्रेजेंटेशन ओके अब्दुल यू कैन स्टार्ट डॉक्टर मोनंदा फॉर प्रेजेंट हियर मैसेल पॉपुलरिटी आई एम फ्रॉम द कोस्ट इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज डूइंग माय फाइनल ईयर एमबी एंड माय प्रोजेक्ट टाइटल इज डिजाइन एनालिसिस एंड द फैब्रिकेशन ऑफ फॉर ऑटोमेटिक कन्वेयर असेंबली मशीन आई हैव डन दिस प्रोजेक्ट इन टाइटन कंपनी Yeah, this is about the company. Uh, the company is full of automatic uh, lines and lathe. Is full of uh, robotic assembly lines. Uh, my external guide is Mr. Gauri Shankar, who guided me to do this project. Yeah, uh, in this uh, is uh, ergonomical and noise related problems. Uh, all uh, most of the machines are uh, related with which uh, is handling uh, heavy weights in improper manner uh, and the uh, the noise problem uh, these are the major problem i have at least traction through noise and the lack of preparation during coding and hardening materials uh, these are the problem these are the identified uh, i took a research on ergonomic uh, problem uh, from the national institute for occupational safety and health had a large amount of uh, research involved in industry Uh, that is uh, 34%. Inside the industry uh, uh, for manual uh, material handling and noise, I have uh, identified these hazards. First is entanglement. They are loading the to tools uh, and unloading the tools with improper manner. Uh, the slip trip falls due to at the same time at the same machine, uh, the hearing problem may occur due to noise, mental distraction. it is nice maybe after this is the scope of my object uh, scope and objective of my project first uh, the ergonomic analysis uh, which is said to be rare entire body assessment this analysis i have done uh, for ergonomic analysis and i have fabricated the mobile lifting trolley improper manual material handling activities and i have done a, a noise analysis to reduce my uh, nice uh, nice problem uh, and i have fabricated the uh, nice barrier also now this is about the ergonomics uh, ergonomics is something but there and the way to make the jobs tasks fit the employees better uh, on screen you can see this is the automatic conveyor assembly machine Uh, which is full of hazards uh, in this machine they are loading and unloading the and which gets the hazard and the center part of the machine creating the noise which is uh, mo mostly hazardous to the uh, uh, operators so i went through my project through this uh, methodology first i have uh, identified my problem behavior of the workers design of the weight lifting trolley and the ergonomic analysis that is what ergonomic analysis and the fabric and then i went through noise analysis and have uh, fabricated the prototype noise barrier and testing the barrier these are my total part of uh, project i went through this uh, so this is the example this is the one of the handling the improper handling uh, this is up to 15 from 15 kg to 45 kg they are handling improper handling this may lead to economy avoid this type of major handling i have fabricated the mobile lifting trolley which is easier to use uh, from uh, to move to that machine so this is the design of the machine you can see uh, uh, is, uh, in the bottom of the Machine, I have present the dead load, uh, which is uh, which is 
machine which is equal as the machine and this is the various uh, so this is the line diagram of the with the dimensions with the dimensions So uh, for this industry, uh, for fabricating the with uh, for fabricating uh, mild steel with thickness of 50 mm, uh, the dead weight side of the machine is 100 kg. A wheel is 3 inch polyurethane wheel. Safe stopper is present in the front of the machine. A uh, rope I have used is flexible steel wire rope, 2 mm. It is used to carry uh, 50 kg. So this is the small calculations uh, for flexible steel for 50 kg according to the calculations uh, I have to use 2.5 mm of rope dia. So this is the basic calculations uh, to take the weight. The same calculations for, for 40 kgs. So after the Design. I have analyzed the Reba analysis, which is a rapid entire body assessment. So this analysis is done for. I have selected ten workers uh, selected for study. There are sixty-five centimeter. The average age is thirty-two to forty-five years. Average human weight is sixty-five kg, and work experience is five to nine years. So this is the table which I took from journal. The Reba level zero to four. 0 to 2 Rebo level is uh, not a problem. Rebo level crossing 3 and 4 is a problem for workers who are handling weight. So these are the action level 1 to 5 took from the journal. The action level 1, 2, 3 is a normal level. It, uh, the low, low risk and the medium risk. The action level 4 and 5 is at the high risk. Change is uh, needed for the posture. Um, from this Reba employee assessment worksheet, I have done my analysis. Uh, will be I will show in the next slide. Uh, the this is for whole body, uh, whole body shaking. For example, the so like trunk, neck, leg, and upper arms. I will explain uh, basically for a trunk. Uh, with the first step is for trunk. Uh, while carrying the material. During movement, if his is uh, upright is uh, no problem, then the score is one. And then the degree of the trunk is if it is more than zero to twenty degree uh, or the extension, we will score one. If there is up to sixty degree, we can score two. And if it is more than sixty degree, we can score three. Like that, uh, like this step for all the body parts. The legs, upper arms, neck, lower arms, and the wrist. So from the table, I have uh, for neck, I have uh, scored him uh, score one. For back, score three. For walk, one. From the three, uh, from the three analysis, uh, for the table of Reva is two. The value I get is four. And the second location for upper arm, lower arm, and the uh, wrist, I have uh, scored uh, the. The value of B, I, I get is 7. The, uh, the value of C is 7. The final score I get from this gray path of worksheet, I have analyzed and scored. The final score came is 8. And there is 1. So in this table, we see that gray path 8 to 10 is, uh, is a dangerous score. For the poster analysis, they have to, they have not uh, take this is the final score. So, uh, the survey, they, they, uh, there are totally 10 workers I have surveyed. Score the three, which is uh, very dangerous, which, are, which they are working in dangerous poster. So, this is the final score. Uh, zero workers, uh, one rebel level one is two workers, and two is four workers. Level level three is four workers. 
to take a material uh, manually they can use this uh, trolley up to 60 kg we can uh, we can handle to, uh, through this trolley some first the procedure uh, to take a uh, uh, materials from one place to another place so after the ergonomic analysis i have done the noise analysis this is the machine what i have showed in the first slide so this so they, they have asked me to reduce the noise uh, by fabricating the noise barrier plus is done so totally three three uh, ultrasonic welding press is present there from 2 feet to 8 feet i have visible 94 decibel is the maximum decibel which is not allowed inside the industry less than 90 decibel is in uh, uh, as per osha occupational safety and health so this is the calculation on the dose and the uh, time weighted average so uh, in this not one percentage which is uh, which is not okay the the dose is the dose of 100 percentage is the last one and the time weighted average is 90 decibel is the allowed one so uh, after the calculation the dose is showing 153 and 93 percent 93.1 time weighted average which is not allowed So this is the second at the same time 117.5 dose and 91.2 time weighted average is calculated. This is not allowed. Suggested the noise barrier for with the two materials acrylic sheet and uh, lexan sheet. First uh, fabric like a box. Uh, first image for the acrylic sheet and the second image also for lexan sheet. So the buzzer as a source. For testing the this nice barrier, uh, for acrylic sheet without barrier, I have observed a 95 decibel. And after 100 meters, I got 80.9 decibel and 60 600 mm 77.6 decibel and 900 mm 75. Which is allowed. At the at the same time in lexan sheet, I have successfully found that this barrier is successfully uh, we can. so and the uh, with the both ergonomic and the noise i have uh, i came to conclusion that the ban with the fabrication of mobile lifting trolley and the noise analysis is conducted with the prototype uh, noise barrier fabrication for my project thank you so okay Sir, any question, sir? Uh, sir, uh, Abdul, sir. Hello. Uh, Mr. Abdul, it is audible to you. Sir, audible, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, Abdul. Actually, the title. Uh, I think uh, you you uh, designed and fabricated two different entities and you clubbed under one title, right? Hello, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. You are right, sir. Uh, you you did two work. Uh, you did two work and you are putting that as one title. Sir, because they are uh, asking to do a. Sir. Yeah, that is main, that. That is fine. Main, that is fine. So, yes, your main focus is on uh, doing that uh, uh, to reduce the hazards on that machine. Okay, okay, okay. What are the hazards involved uh, in the machine? I have identified problems in the machine, and I have chosen the two problems: the ergonomic problem and the noise problem. And I have took the project and the, the, the research, and I finally found this uh, application. The design and analysis, uh, design analysis and fabrication of mobile lifting yes. trolley. 
and a synthetic noise barrier for automatic conveyor yes, assembly machine because uh, uh, as uh, as a yes, project uh, it won't be a problem but when you are coming for a presentation like thing so you should concentrate on one aspect so then that will give you a very good picture yes, because you may not conclude you you may not conclude on this so the conclusion may be it should be a coherent conclusion uh, on one one side you are talking about uh, yes, uh, comfortable uh, level of handling material on the other side you are talking about uh, uh, comfortable level of working atmosphere yes. so so both you know the uh, 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 bring it in one particular platform because both are entirely uh, different phenomena but for company it will be useful so that is one of my suggestion and uh, have yes. you implemented this okay, have you implemented this trolley yes sir hey the, the both of the yes sir this is the fabrication fab fabricated inside the company okay now they are using that hello sir are they using now yes sir they are using for that machine okay have you made yes, any sir, feedback yes, they are using currently have they we made a have we made any feedback analysis uh, from the uh, workers how no, sir. how much i have to i have to go back sir uh, no okay. sir due to corona virus uh, uh, they have stopped uh, the stopped sir i have to go for uh, next week sir okay okay can you can you come to that your line model uh, your friend your ppt can you come to that line model line sketch uh, which you created can i present now yeah yeah you can you can bring it yes sir yeah you can have to present yeah you can present up there yes sir this is the go to the previous slide okay fine so uh, this uh, center load you are keeping on center load no sir yeah. Yes, sir. There is a center load, a space for load like that you are kept in the switch. Yes, sir, there is a space for keeping the load, sir. To keep load the load compact, right? Okay, yes, okay, fine, fine, fine. Because I got confused. There is a dead load here. No, sir. Dead load is in back side, sir. The the, the space for whatever material we are carrying. okay 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 so how this can be improvised further uh, can you have uh, can you specify some scope for further improvement for further improvement uh, sir after fabrication i have done uh, have, have the fabrication is the last process i have done and i came back from company due to this pandemic okay so uh, you have completed the fabrication but uh, not has been implemented in the factory okay fine fine thank you sir i have fabricated and kept it into the <coughs> oh fine thank you thank you sir uh, is there any question sir uh, abdul have you done any analysis Yes, sir, I have told that the ergonomic analysis, rebar analysis, I have done. Rapid entire body assessment. Okay, okay. And in that, I uh, have considered the safety aspects. Yes, sir. Safety aspect. What are the factors you consider for safety aspect? Uh, during the during handling the materials. and uh, they are handling more than uh, 40 kg and 50 kg manually a single person it is a safety problem sir according to ergonomic it is not allowed inside company sir 
so rep analysis helps to uh, check uh, this analysis helps to check the workers from all body all body assessment whether they are uh, handling how many how many weight a person have to take from uh, according to their ages from this analysis we can uh, find that okay then uh, you have shown one calculation design where you have yes, taken sir. that formula tell formulas only one formula you have shown uh -huh. for designing the from journal yes sir from journal i have searched for uh, the material what are the wires i have to select for uh, 60 kg materials 60 kg uh, material the flexible steel wire material depends on the yes sir, it is a pure yes sir, what kind of material it is uh, you uh, what uh, how much weight you are taking that's the that's the matter sir oh you are uh, then uh, that wire is a single straw i mean you are mixed or straw like a mixed wires or single wire single okay okay it's like a single wire sir flexible steel wire it is a single wire sir okay okay yes sir okay, thank you okay good thank you okay thank you labdo sir can we move to the next up next paper sir okay next paper right yes sir yes sir yes you can uh, next paper is paper, paper number 55 semi automated motorized bar bending machine mr balaji are you there no, yes sir yes sir yes sir i am here uh, now you can share your screen balaji no okay sir. so my screen is visible yeah it's visible make it as a full full screen uh, yes You can start presentation. Uh, very good morning. Good afternoon to one and all. Uh, uh, I am coming from uh, IFD College of Engineering uh, in Vilipuram. Um, my project is uh, semi-automated -automat motorized bar bending machine. Mm, in, uh, nowadays, uh, in building con construction, uh, bar bending is... Uh, uh is a main um, main um main work in uh, bar bending uh, bar bending work uh, bar bending machines are uh, mostly available in uh, hydraulics and uh, pneumatics uh, in in small uh, in small building construction uh, uh, bar, bar bending machines are not uh, available um, bar bends uh, by by manual only Uh, so we plan, we we make a one machine uh, um, for small small building construction work bar bending in motorized method uh, because uh, hydraulic and pneumatics are uh, costly uh, so we we, we make uh, semi automatic motorized uh, bar bending machine in low cost when compared to hydraulic and uh, pneumatic Uh, objective of this uh, is uh, uh, to reduce uh, human works uh, and uh, cost of the bar bending is uh, uh, less when compared to hydraulics and uh, pneumatics uh, and also we increase the productions uh, it is one of the semi automatic uh, bar bending machine and it uh, portable uh, wherever we can uh, take uh, Uh, it is no need a uh, very skilled person to operate but in uh, hydraulics and pneumatics uh, we need uh, knowledge about to operate the hydraulics and pneumatics mm. sir my screen is visible yes you can proceed uh, oh, okay sir uh, ma when uh, hydraulics and um, uh, hydraulic machines occupy some more space uh, but uh, now my semi automatic bar bending machine is uh, no take more space it only takes less space and easy to take wherever we want uh, it is manual bar bending work in small construction uh, when manual bar bending 
Ma'am, human had tired to bend the bar and uh, make more times. Uh, so production is uh, becomes less. So we make a uh, small type of uh, uh, semi-automated uh, motorized bar bending machine. Uh, this is the this is the, the machine. Uh, components uh, we use the battery, motor, shaft, bearings, uh, bubble gear and uh, circular plate to bend the bar uh, working uh, working we can uh, we i uh, explain in a diagram uh, working is uh, simple uh, battery transmit uh, power to motor uh, uh, motor uh, uh, rotates the shaft uh, with the help of uh, shaft uh, bubble gear rotates uh, bubble gear uh, transfer the uh, linear motion into vertical mo uh, ro rotation and we insert the bar between the between these uh, two rods um, and the we bend the bar at uh, required angle we need uh, calculation of the motor uh, motor specification is uh, power uh, 50 Speed of the motor is uh, 700 rpm. Uh, gear calculation is uh, uh, Z1 10, Z2 16, and uh, motor uh, speed N2 uh, 700 rpm. We get uh, final speed uh, yeah, for 437 rpm. Um, by we have uh, required torque, we have uh, 10 10.91 newton meter. For bend for bending 5 mm bar, uh, 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 yield strength to bend the bar is uh, yield strength for bend the bar is uh, uh, 25 to sorry 250. Uh, uh, we are aiming for morning Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, we know that the formula T is equal to S by Y. Uh, by shooting, uh, finally, we are required uh, torque. We get uh, 3 newton meter. So the, uh, so the machine is ready to bend the uh, torque. So bend the bar. Uh, advantage of the semi automatic border is bar bending is uh, uh, less cost when compared to hydraulics and pneumatics. Uh, no need skilled person. Uh, production is increased and more precision. Uh, we can take wherever we want. Uh, in 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 building uh, in small building construction uh, we know we know no no know have power supply. So we use a battery. So we use a battery system uh, to use the bar bar bending. Uh, but uh, in hydraulics, uh, we need a power supply to use. So on on that uh, small construction area, we know power supply. This is the main advantage. Uh, disadvantage of the machine is. Uh, uh, inserting bar is uh, by manual only, not automatically. Um, without charge, if charge is not in uh, battery, we cannot uh, able to operate. And transport facility is need. Mm, mm, conclu conclusion of the presentation is, uh, uh, main thing is uh, reduce the cost of, cost of the bar bending machine. And also human work, uh, human work, and uh, without power, without uh, mm, without skilled person, we can operate the uh, bar bending machine. Mm, so my next uh, 
நெக்ஸ்ட் இது எய்ம் இஸ் டு மேக் ஃபுல்லி ஆட்டோமேட்டட் பார் பெண்டிங் மிஷின் இட் இஸ் செமி ஆட்டோமேட்டிக் ஒன்லி thank you sir um sir balaji i have one question yes sir uh, what is the specification of battery you need for the uh, uh, torque uh, which you calculated 3 newton meter yes sir what is the 12 volt battery 12 volt battery i sir all batteries are 12 volt battery uh, we use a 12 volt battery sir for that motor uh. yeah. Uh, we need uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, we use a, a, a battery for a... have you tried have you tried bending any of the rods using the 12 volt battery uh, no sir no sir only assemble only sir uh, okay it's not run why don't you try why don't you check you are having all the connections uh, once if you Uh, get uh, energy from the battery you have yeah. tried na yes sir i uh, video is uh, now not uh, yeah, sir. Uh, i am sir another author uh, but uh, can not able to contact them okay. but it uh, rotates sir uh, it will rotate uh, but uh, my question is whether uh, it will bend the ah uh, yes sir bend sir speed hmm. uh, inversely proportional to torque uh, speed uh, reduced by yeah all those calculation all we know but we want to see whether the battery which you are having is capable of bending the rod yes sir yes sir it comes yes sir able sir okay thank you mm, thank you balaji uh, have you done any literature survey regarding this ah uh, yes sir whether it is already available or new one new one sir new one how do you ensure that it is a new one whether you have done any literature review or not shown any literature review uh literally you not include in this uh, ppt sir okay thank you any other question sir so can we move to the next one sir Mr. Mohamad, Kaha? Uh, kindly unmute yourself. Hello, sir. Are ah, you yes, 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 yes. Ah, yes, now you, can, now, you can, now, you can, now you can share your screen. You can share okay, it. Sir. sir, is it possible to everyone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to your presentation. Yes. Okay, come to, the, come to the first slide. Okay, okay. My name is Mohamad Taha, sir. I am from uh, Mekko Sunnath Engineering College. I am an ME industrial safety student, sir. First of all, I thank the opportunity for giving me to present. And I thank, I wholeheartedly thank the Ramco College for organizing such an event even during this uh, crisis situation, sir. And next, uh, the introduction. Uh, first of all, the topic of my project is design and fabrication of the pellet mill to pelletize the compost derived from kitchen waste. and testing its competency as organic fertilizer uh, first of all going to introduction slide um uh, currently we know that the solid waste management is one of the problem we are facing nowadays about 1.5 uh, lakhs of uh, solid waste are generated according to the ministry of uh, uh, india these wastes can be cycled recycled into the compost sir the compost is a valuable process 
by which these gestures can be efficiently utilized uh, to the to something which is uh, uh, economically important and also uh, it, it is uh, it can be applied as a nutrient for uh, um plant growth and agricultural field etc uh on going into this field i have uh, did a literature various literature reviews these are some of the papers which i uh, which i studied uh, first of all the uh, the composting is uh, according to the journals various journals i referred the composting is one of the prominent efficient technique which can be utilized for bioconversion of materials and then uh, i have implemented a process of pelletization of the compost uh, the pelletization is uh, is because for densification and the mechanization of the compost uh, so uh, so that the, its applicability can be increased its, its application can be increased and so and uh, this are the problem identification first of all the black color block uh, shows that uh, the process of uh, food waste management in which the waste wastes are composted and then the composts are being used for as a fertilizer and uh, the the problems in those uh, process are listed in the lecture uh, given in the regular boxes uh, first thing is that uh, in the in the, con- the composting conventional composting process itself is a time consuming process and during the process the ammonia and other uh, gases will be formed locally and then the final end compost has a low nutrient to volume ratio and so uh, it can be used uh, it can, it can uh, and also due to the low density uh, the tra- transportation cost will be also high for the compost and so um, i am the solution is given the blue boxes uh, so first of all the on 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 overcoming the problems relating to the composting i have chosen the bokasi composting method the bokasi composting method is a, a um, efficient method when compared to the conventional composting uh, the we will see it uh, later uh, in coming slide and to deal with the low density uh, to, uh, low density problem i have um, chosen the pelletization method let's see uh, this is the methodology which i chosen uh, let's go for going to the project Uh, first of all the uh, about composting for those who don't know about the composting the composting is a process for uh, uh, organic uh, uh, to break down the organic matter into the much uh, simpler form which can be applied to the soil for and uh, for, um, for enriching its nutrients the normal phases is involved in the composting are mesophilic phase thermophilic and mesophilic second phase like there uh, these phases were uh, are a time con- uh, time consuming one and it take around uh, uh, in a whole it take around 2 uh, to 3 months Uh, to get a mature compost and so uh, through the various uh, literature reviews i i came put forth uh, the bokasi composting as a solution for that and the so since the bokasi composting is anaerobic fermentation method uh, let's see uh, the detailed procedure in the coming upcoming slide uh, as, as far as now the bokasi composting is a process for the uh, less time consumption uh, and uh, Uh, it involves some specialist microbes such as lactic acid bacteria photosynthetic bacteria etc and all uh, this is the bokasi composting procedure uh, in which uh, the first uh, microbes have to be selected and then the microbes are uh, used to produce the inoculate uh, used to inoculate the, the bran the bran is kept with the microbes uh, for 15 days anaerobically and the bran will get and the uh, get soaked in microbes and these brans are used to ferment the organic wastes which we collected and then the wastes are uh, uh, pickled uh, the, the phase is called the curing phase it would take around uh, some week or twice uh, the compost the composting may insel composting material or organic wastes has to be selected carefully in the ratio of 30 to 1 of carbon is the nitrogen ratio uh, the ratio classifications are given in the green wastes and brown wastes as, as in the table for a reference and uh, yeah, one have to one who want to do the composting has to carefully select the material in this basis on this basis this is the image of uh, the work which what i did first uh, the the bokasi bran is uh, made and then the vegetable wastes are collected and 
the bokasi uh, layer the, the, the bokasi bran is layered on the compost and after the 15 days the waste get completely fermented and then the waste get cured in the soil and then uh, within by the 15 days uh 15 days of curing and 15 days of fermentation total takes around uh, 30 days by the end of the 30 days we will be able to get uh, the complete mature compost now to check the maturation of the compost i did the some of the testers as listed on the journals these are the testers and uh, each and every test shows that uh, it has a complete competency to act as a um, uh, mature compost and coming to the pelletization part of the project uh, there comes mechanical work uh, first of all what is the pelletization uh, to those who don't know it's to increase the bulk density and to increase the nutrient uh, slow slow release of nutrient property which is desirable uh, since all the farmers knows that uh, it is a, such a property is a, um, very required for nutrient for fertilizer since uh, it reduces the number of atoms to uh, give the nutrient to the plant during its life span the typical bulk density of the compost is around 626 kg per cubic meter which i determined using the bucket drop method then the bulk density of the compost uh, determined by uh, determined by the method is given below is given the slide that um, 626 uh, kg per meter cube is uh, is what i get uh, through the bulk density test and the uh, design of pellet the pellet mill is designed and fabricated uh, the the design the design work is done using the solid growth software where i the where the dimensions are chosen accordingly uh, not to get the final product at a 3 liter of uh, compost to handle the 3 liter of compost uh, i designed uh, you this using the solid growth software and then fabricated uh, and then purchased some uh, material materials uh, purchased the materials and they assembled them and the compost pellets are finally produced from the pellet mill this compost pellet has to be tested for its competency no uh, for that uh, the two testers uh, which with what i did is the bulk density test um, the bulk density uh, before and after the bulk density test involves uh, bulk density before and after uh, uh, pelletizing the compost and then the plant growth test uh, to uh, to show its competency in real life to uh, uh, against the uh, already available fertilizer first this is the uh, test result of the bulk density where the the left side uh, table shows the bulk density of the compost uh, which is not pelletized and after the pelletization the bulk density of the, the bulk density is raised uh, about 200 this shows that uh, the process is efficient the the pellet mill watch the pellet mill which i fabricated is uh, is able to increase the bulk density of a material and the uh, and the next uh, next uh, next part is next test is the plant growth comparison test as we all know that the nitrogen phosphorus and potassium are the three main uh, uh, nutrient which is required by the plant and i have chosen the tomato plant for the test for the test purpose and then for the tomato plant the npk requirement according is uh, is prescribed by the tamil nadu agricultural institute is given and accordingly i have chosen the i have chosen the number uh, amount of uh, compost to give that nutrient to the plant that is uh, give, uh, that calculation is given uh, in that uh, in given in the table now it shows that uh, uh, at most 155 grams of uh, compost is required to feed the soil uh, of this much amount of nutrient npk nutrient and then uh, the test is carried out with a path for 0.5 square feet uh, where the two tomato plants were grown um, and the result uh, shows that uh, i have uh, periodically monitored their growth for up to 60 days um, in the in the four consecutive readings shows that Uh, there is a not a um, uh, very much gap uh, or a very much discrepancy between the uh, already available chemical fertilizers npk fertilizers and the compost pellets which i have fabricated this shows that uh, there is uh, also there is one more test like a suit length uh, comparison test this also impl- implies that um, so it uh, so it is uh, slightly uh, so the plant growth is uh, uh, late, uh, slightly uh, little compared to the npk chemical fertilizers Uh, but yet it has a has its own competence level uh, to act as a fertilizer in the market uh, and by this project uh, this is after abstract project um, and the conclusion overall conclusion i am going to say is, uh, 
uh, um, overall conclusion from the project is um, the the over the overall method will put forth the, the pellets as a environmentally safe compost pellet as an alternative solution for chemical fertilizers which are in the market. Since we all know that the chemical fertilizers itself is a uh, has its own uh, drawbacks and problems uh, by by implementing such a such type of uh, uh compost pellet these problems can be overcome uh sec- and it also increases the applicability of the uh, compost in real life uh that's all this is the reference we taken thanks for listening the presentation hello there the uh, very good work and useful work you did yes sir thank you sir thanks Uh, uh you are in a fine layer of uh, me program is it yes sir me industrial safety program sir so oh, me industrial safety okay yes, so you have completed your course yes sir uh, i am a second year student sir uh, due to the cor- uh, corona lockdown uh, so it's it's only two year program right it's only two yes, year sir. program yes sir two year program sir yes, sir so you are in the final semester yes sir uh, yes sir okay 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 so final semester is the project semester right and yes, no sir. other paper for you yes sir i have to okay. so, focus on paper and conference uh, that's the part of our curriculum sir and that's why okay. i yes. okay when you started this project sir this project is uh, started by last january sir la, la, sir this year january sir this year january before that i have okay. did uh, uh, sir this the first to work uh, it started from the january sir before that i did the phase one work sir this is the oh, phase okay, two okay. okay 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 thank you for giving it uh, uh, one more question uh, one, one question i have okay. have you tried uh, 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 with respect to that uh, calorific value of uh, the uh, the kitchen waste and all after uh, Uh, drying it no you you don't try that you you are uh, planning to get only uh, manual right yes sir i'm planning to no i didn't uh, check the color pick values sir it's not important for me okay 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 fine thank you okay thank you sir thank you for giving me up wait 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 some more some more bill sir sir is there any question sir not clear sir what field study you done in any field study regarding this field sir uh, mr mehta uh, have you done any field study that was the last question yes sir i have uh, field study in the sense uh, i did uh, uh, i did uh, grow the some uh, two two for uh, tomato plants sir that was a field study i did sir i didn't uh, um, Employed it to the farmers and test in a field, sir. In a greater field, I I only did that plant, sir. That's my question. Sir, 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 any question, sir? Uh, sir, sir, uh, can you hear? Uh, suppose you are yeah, 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 uh, pellet. Uh, you are uh, increasing your nutrition of the plant. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, then, what about the other effect? Is there any effect on this losing something? Other uh, parameters? Have you checked it? Yes, sir. From the literature. Yes, sir. From the literature, by densifying the uh, fertilizers. Um, if if you are not densifying the fertilizers, so we have to apply it uh, uh, during a periodic uh, at a periodic interval during the plant growth, sir. If we are not densifying it, I am I am densifying the pellet. Uh, i am densifying the fertilizer in the form of pellet and so it has to be applied uh, during uh, once in a life sir uh, once in the plant life sir once we applied it it's enough for its uh, entire uh, plant growth sir okay once you applied it uh, it will be applicable for up to the life of a plant plant yes sir uh, yes sir it would take around one year to dissipate the entire pellet sir due to the densification process then uh, have you done any cost analysis with uh, chemical and this one 
no sir past services i haven't done sir okay okay good thank you thank you sir okay thank you mohan okay sir uh, uh, participant paper id is uh, paper number 24 uh, mr prabhavar are you there mr prabhavar are you there yes sir uh, now you can uh, share your screen okay sir okay sir ఫస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ఆల్ గుడ్ ఆఫ్టర్నూన్ టు వన్ అండ్ ఆల్ ప్రసెంట్ హియర్ ఐ వుడ్ లైక్ టు థ్యాంక్ రామ్కో ఇంజనీరింగ్ కాలేజ్ ఫర్ గివింగ్ ద వండర్ఫుల్ ఆపర్చునిటీ now i explain my project analysis of mechanical and mixed structural characteristics of aisi 31 austenic stainless steel austenic stainless steel and in colony 8 to 5 ns alloy nickel based alloy for dissimilar laser welds in this project this is nothing but we are using two different materials by using weld to join and to analyze the characteristics of mechanical and microstructural in of the material then abstract the project this is the research then two different material analysis of mechanical and microstructural and the characteristics stainless steel and nickel stainless steel then nickel in colony is a combination of nickel aluminum alloy by using the india laser welds to join the two metals and to and to analyze the characteristics by using this india pulse laser beam welding india is nothing but neodymium deuterium then this is the india laser india stands for neodymium then yam stands for deuterium aluminum garnet the methodology is like that to select the two different metals then and to join by this laser weld to analyze them and to check the characteristics then this are uh, this is the this is the model of my project by using that analysis of the method to prefer to prefer this to analysis and hello what is audio bill you can present but i hope you left the meeting sir hello prabhar can you hear mr prabhar
Okay, sir. Let us go for the next one, sir. So, paper ID. So, paper ID seventy one. Mr. Arun, are you there? Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am here. Ah, okay. Oh. Ah, yes, sir. Ah. You can share. Your, you, you can share your screen. Sir, is it okay? Uh, okay, Arun. Okay, Arun. You can start. Ah, okay, sir. Okay. Ah, uh, sir. Good evening. Sir, I am Samson Kumar Arun. Sir, Samson Arun, sir. Hello. Uh, just a moment, Arun. Sir, sir, uh, okay. I am available. Okay. 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 Due to interruption, uh, Mr. Prabhar is not available, yes. sir. So we are going for next slide. No problem. Make it quickly. Ah, okay. Okay, Mr. Arun, you can continue. Ah, okay, sir. Okay. Good evening, sir. Actually, I am Mr. Arun, and uh, my co-authors Mr. Shiva, F. Sabina, Fred, Rishma. Actually, uh, it is planned to uh, by Shiva. He she will be presenting. Unfortunately, due to power shutdown, she is unable to present. So I'll I'll be continuing the session, sir. Uh, hello. Ah. You can continue, Arun. You can continue. Ah, okay, okay, sir. So actually, my topic is that is functional and analysis of 3D printer. So we had 3D printer from 1980 onwards. So in that 3D printer, we are having uh, different types recently. Uh, still now, we, if you want to see from 80 to 80s to 2020, we have different types of 3D printers. So I have taken that that is uh, the functional analysis and difference between of different types of 3D printers. Uh, 3D printers which we are having. So first we can see what is 3D printer and how 3D printing is carried out. So 3D printer and uh, to, to say about 3D printing, actually it is based on additive manufacturing technique. The technology we are using here is additive manufacturing technology. Technology. So saying about manufacturing technique, we can carry out manufacturing technique in uh, two ways. One is subtractive and additive manufacturing technique. So to say about subtractive manufacturing technique, so here the design what we are going to carry out uh, is uh, carried out how we are we will take the raw material and we will remove unnecessary parts and we will design the object. Whereas in additive manufacturing technique, we uh, we will from the smaller particle we will. Uh, consolidate we will uh, build layer by layer and the necessary object is designed so the uh, wastage is less so this is the benefit of this technique of, uh, of 3d uh, printing technology so uh, we uh, can go in detail about this so see to say about 3d uh, printing technologies uh, still now we are having around nine technology uh, nine methods of 3d printing uh, 3d printing technologies 
uh, first one is stereo lithography next one fused deposition modeling third selective laser sintering fourth laminated object manufacturing fifth digital light processing sixth electron beam melting seventh selective deposition lamination eighth inkjet that is material jetting and the final binder setting so like that there are nine types of 3d printing technologies till now so what is the benefit of this uh, uh, so before going to 3d printing te technologies in detail what are the benefit we are obtaining from this 3d print, uh, printing technology to say about this that is it is a single step manufacture what is the object we want to manufacture so we will have in digital design and we will uh, we will feed this what is the design we want to uh, produce we want to manufacture to the 3d printer and the 3d printer will uh, design the particular project so it is additive man here the technique used is additive manufacture technique and it is a single step manufacture so this is first one advantage next what are be the complex design if we can be carried out in 3d printer so next uh, to say about whatever we are imagining whatever we uh, the design we we uh, created or innovated it can be made into a prototype with the help of this 3d printer so again to say more about the advantages uh, new shapes can be uh, formulated structures can be created with the help of this uh, 3d printer the uh, the foremost advantage is that is waste re reduction that is a uh, in 3d printing technology in manufacturing the uh, foremost advantage is that is waste re reduction and if you want to different some similar products to be uh, manufactured here no need of different tools there in manufacturing for every uh, every production we will uh, some uh, expect some different tools for production but considering 3d printer uh, printing technology there is no need of different tools for different parts of production so we can have a similar the, the only thing is we need to change the design in the design part we can change the design and the if you feed the to the feed the uh, file form file to the corresponding 3d printer it will be going to print the project or model so next uh, to say about the 3d printer so there are three stages the first one is design the next one is manufacturing and testing so already we uh, told that is uh, whatever design we require we will be uh, formula uh, you, uh, with the help of some softwares like autocad autodesk we can design at and it, it can be fit to the 3d printer where the manufacturing will be carried out here uh, the uh, the whatever the model we have designed in the software it will be printed in manufacturing in testing part whether the um, uh, estimate uh, designed model is achieved or if any variation is there we can having out some subtractive uh, manufacturing sub uh, subtractive method and we can remove that or fine tune that which, which should be carried out in testing stage so like that the uh, 3d printing process have three things that is modeling printing and finishing so these are the things so next so this is the process of additive manufacturing process and uh, the uh, 3d printer works on uh, based on additive manufacturing process chain which so uh, regarding modeling what i have already explained the design formats in modeling the design formats uh, uh, can be in stl format vrml format or am amf format that is using that cad softwares some animation softwares we are using the we can get the design as stl vrml amf what about the stl means it is stereo lithographic regarding vrm vrml format that is virtual reality modeling language and amf that is additive manage manufacturing file format so uh, with the help, uh, with the help of softwares uh, available softwares we can uh, 
we can formulate we can uh, design we can draw the, the object model in this format that is stl vrml or am and it is given to that is printing so uh, uh, printing uh, that is uh, the printer will be carrying out and the finishing so here the regarding the uh, finishing the uh, we, uh, whatever resolution we require whatever uh, tuning we require we can help uh, we take uh, we can seek the help of subtractive manufacture uh, subtractive tools so that is subtractive process we can remove unnecessary things so now we can see the about selective laser sintering that is in selective laser sintering that is we are using some power laser so that laser will help to uh, liquid uh, liquidify the plastic material the material we are using the material we are using that is the regarding saying about material we are having around five types of material still now we are uh, using uh, in 3d printer first one is abs plastic second one pla and third one pva fourth one pc and fifth one soft pla so uh, saying about abs that is acrylonite butadiene strain and second one pla that is polylactic acid third one pva that is polyvinyl alcohol pc that is polycarbonate fifth one soft pla that is the rubber type of polylactic acid like that we are having five different materials which were used uh, which were uh, we are using in 3d printer that is in normal printer we are using some uh, ink for uh, for printing here they are using these materials that is plastic as uh, some related to plastic that is polymer composite materials rubber resigns like that some sort of materials we are using for uh, the manufacture in printer 3d printer for designing the uh, object in 3d printer so uh, to melt the uh, material to uh, to melt the material to fuse the material they are using power laser in selective laser sintering so in stereolithographic they are using ultra curable photopolymer in your uh, the uh, laser they are using for stereolithographic so continuously then in fdm they are using some special models like this is a, is a, like this the in saying about its applications uh, they are now they are using in every uh, part of the things that is in automobile industry they are using in defense they are using medical industry uh, they are using and in bionics they are using like that it has a medical field like that it has diversified its all its uh, applications throughout 360 degree all the applications they have taken now in 2020 so the main drawback to say about the challenges that is the 3d printer can uh, print or um, create any sort of uh, products objects which we are giving through the design so there may be a possibility of uh, some uh, illegal aspects such as uh, designing guns, uh, some uh, co copyrighted things, some restricted things. So this creates the challenges in 3D printing. Um, so okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Mr. Sharon. Ah, okay, sir. Okay. Sorry, sir. Uh, Mr. Arun. Ah, okay, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, I think you made uh, <laughs> uh, a study on uh, uh, 3D printing. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Actually, uh, we are having different types of 3D printers. So I made a small uh, class, uh, systematic analysis on all the three, all the printers. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you tell me what are all the uh, standards available uh, in order to qualify or uh, in order to approve your uh, 3D printing process? Any standards available? Standards? Actually, the uh, you are uh, asking regarding that laws, uh, law that regulations are uh, standards. No, say, for example, if I take one material. Uh, if I want to say that this material is having this strength, uh, I go with respect to some standard testing procedures like ASTM, uh, ISO. Uh, so like that, I have some standards. So for tensile test, I have some number. Ah, okay, 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 okay. So do you have any standards 
in order to uh, qualify your uh, 3d testing uh, or uh, 3d printing material process anything like that do you have any standards uh, sir actually uh, i have one uh, to just classification uh, classifying all the 3d printers sir what are the so, printers available from 1980s to still 2020 so mm -hmm. uh, just i uh, out, just outlined uh, what are the things are available like that just a okay. survey of 3d printer okay for for your information uh, this as astm ah okay sir and i so they they formulated uh, some standards ah okay sir okay sir so with respect to that standard initially you listed out somewhere around nine uh, uh, 3d ah, yes, printing technology that has been clubbed into seven actually seven okay 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 sir okay sir <laughs> in club to you you please refer so that and all will be very interesting and that will give you some more information so that ah, okay, stm and iso they jointly uh, created some standards for starting from the year 2015 15 onwards okay sir okay so you please refer to that huh? thank you ah, ah okay sir okay sir. thank you sir thank you uh, arun sir ha ah, yes sir yes sir uh, who was uh, who is invented the 3d printing sir sir who is invented the 3d printing sir in uh, nine, they have uh, introduced in 1980 sir actually 1980 uh, just a minute sir <laughs> oh, 19 uh, 19 sir uh, okay, not okay sir. okay okay then ah uh, okay Do you ah, know okay, about uh, additive fabrication and additive manufacturing? Do you know ah, yes, additive sir, yes. fabrication? Ah, yes sir, yes sir. Actually, additive manufacturing that is uh, uh, layer by layer we are uh, constructing the material. Layer by layer, uh, layer uh, with the help of raw material uh, we are constructing the material. That is additive manufacturing. Um, okay. Additive fabrication, ah, okay. sir. There any? Do you know it? so additive fabrication actually <laughs> why i am asking oh, no. this question because you are ah, okay. the review of uh, work you are not ah yes sir yes sir yes sir work it is a, like a review paper so ah yes sir the review paper you could have do it in the starting itself you should know that uh, starting from the where invented what is the process to go and how the invention takes place and what is the step by step procedure they are doing it step by step technologies are doing it that will okay, be sir. interesting uh, for us also because uh, okay, okay. you person in 3d printing suppose they want to learn 3d printing so uh, your information should be useful for the people anyway, sure sir sure give you few uh, sir, sir, actually uh, for the uh, today uh, my sister uh, uh, is uh, 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 actually uh, so <laughs> plan to present thing sir first thing the, please uh, 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 i request all of you to power shut down general i continued the session uh, feedback will be actually uh, uh, given at the working in that area of uh, mandatory okay uh, the at once ah, okay. uh, those who are uh, ah, okay. giving the feedback yeah, only will get the certificate So that is one thing. Uh, you please uh, keep it on your. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, Vignesharan, sir, are you there? Mr. Vignesharan, sir. Okay, Mr. Vignesharan, sir. <laughs> प्रेजेशन इज क Uh, yes, sir. But I'm sad. What is the topic, Mr. Kamrajan? Sir, investigation of mechanical properties of okay, copper and okay. vanadium. Okay, you can continue. You can continue. Sir, no. Okay, Mr. Vigneshwar, sir, are you there? Mr. Vigneshwar, sir. <laughs> Mr. 
जबील सर अरे जब जबील सर मेकानिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकलिकल
reinforcements uh, in order to enhance their uh, mechanical properties mm, the the main uh, objective in steel casting is that the stirrer uh, must have the uh, greater temperature uh, than uh, than the composite we have used um, mainly the steel casting process uh, based on the following parameters uh, stirrer speed stirring temperature uh, stirring time preheat temperature of the mold preheat temperature of uh, reinforcement pouring of melt etc next um uh, from the steel casting process uh, we have uh, uh, separated uh, five different uh, composition for our uh, project uh, these are the five different composition uh, the, the in our project uh, we melted the copper at uh, 1200 degrees celsius um, uh, after that we have added the reinforcement like vanadium oxide and graphene first uh, mainly the ven vanadium oxide and uh, graphene are uh, preheated at uh, 800 degrees celsius uh, before added with the uh, molten uh, copper um, if if uh, we do not uh, if we are not preheated means uh, it will uh, form uh, pores inside the material so preheat uh, is a very important thing in a steel casting process uh, what are the advantages of uh, using uh, steel casting means uh, uh, if you are using a uh, steel casting we can eliminate the uh, pores uh, flexibility uh, good dimensional accuracy and good surface finish we can uh, achieve a higher hardness uh, in our uh, uh, final reinforcements so these are I, these are some of the test results uh, we have obtained uh, uh, from the composites um, with a different composition uh, these are uh, some of the tests we have uh, done with our project. Uh, some of them are a hardness impact test. Um, we have taken uh, some images of uh, each composition whether uh, to know about the pores. Um, first, uh, I have said about the hardness test. Um, mainly, the hardness is uh, defined as the resistance to indentation and it is determined by the uh, depth of the indenter. Uh, the rockwell harness scale is of uh, two types. Uh, they are uh, rockwell harness B and rockwell harness C. Uh, in our project, uh, we used uh, rockwell harness uh, C scale. Um, these are uh, some of the obtained readings uh, from our project. Uh, in, in our project, uh, the best uh, composition is uh, composition 4, which is a higher best harness. Uh, Rockwell harness uh, C scale value. Hello, can you hear me, sir? Hello. Yes, you can proceed. Yes, you can speak, Andrajan. Ah, okay. yes. You can proceed. Uh, impact test. Um, here, next we uh, we have done an impact test. An imp uh, I have uh, impact test is uh, used to observe the mechanic uh, when a sudden load is applied to the specimen. Uh, in our uh, project, we used uh, Charpy impact test. Uh, before that, uh, we have uh, 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 prepared our impact test specimen. Um, uh, these are some of the dimensions uh, how we have prepared the you know, prepared our impact test specimen. Uh, Uh, these are the results we have obtained uh, from our uh, five different uh, composition. Um, from this uh, the uh, composition, the composition for uh, have uh, better uh, source uh, better energy absorbed values. Uh, sir, uh, next we have done a wear test. Mm. The wear test uh, is used to predict uh, wear performance and to investigate the wear mechanics. Uh, wear is the gradual removal or deformation of a metal in the solid surfaces. The diagram shows the how we have done the wear test. We have uh, there are various methods in wear test. In our project, we used uh, sliding wear test. Uh, for a sliding wear test, we have uh, prepared the specimen in the 
described dimensions uh, diameter is 10 mm length 35 mm uh, the below diagram uh, shows the uh, prepared uh, specimen for our uh, wear test um, uh, next uh, scanning electron microscope uh, in our project uh, uh, we have, uh, we took uh, all uh, different composition uh, we took the images of uh, five different composition um, scanning electron microscope is nothing but uh, we uh, Ah, yes, sir. Ah. Yes, yes, yes. Time over, you can directly go to the conclusion, sir. Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Ah, yes, sir. From the various mechanical properties investigator, uh, we come to an end that the composition for gives a higher resistance value in harness and impact test when compared with other different uh, composition. um so from this the composition for will give a better uh, uh, result uh, which we can use for various uh, engineering applications um, we can also take the corresponding semi images for the composition for sir sir thank you hello thank you sir okay okay mr kamarajan i have a question yes sir may you know the application for which you are doing all this uh, analysis for what uh, application your analysis will be useful uh, sir we can use uh, applications like uh, brake linings uh, in our uh, vehicles and other and other electrical applications which we have faced a lot of uh, wear for brake application yes sir brake brake lining sir Elect electrical applications in brake linings electrical application can you make very specific hello uh, electrical application you are telling ha ah, yes sir very specific where it is going to be used sir specifically i not uh, google sir okay so whenever you do a work you should understand how my work is going to be useful ah okay sir so with, with that you do na you will be getting lot of confidence on your work hmm yes sir so taking some three elements and adding together and doing so many tests and uh, some uh, uh, fracture test some uh, scanning electron microscopy all those things You yes, sir. Ask one question. Where am I going to use this? Um, sir, we can. Uh, I, uh, I, I used in an uh, electrical uh, application, but uh, not specifically known uh, where to use. Ah, then that is very important. Electrical applications. See, mechanical application you can say, but instead you are telling brake, brake, brake shoe, shoe, something like that. Brake. Ah, uh, sir, brake lines. <laughs> I think copper conductivity is much required. Yes, sir. And, uh, some, of the, some of the places where it it should it, it need to be hard. Ah. Uh. Right. So that is all correct. But uh, you should specify some application. Hmm. Okay, so sir. You are a uh, 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 ME student or a B student? Sir, I am uh, final year B mechanical engineering, sir. So try to identify a very good application for your work. Hmm. Okay, sir. that will give you a lot of confidence that you have done something some good work so without mm. application uh, if anybody even uh, asking you then you should be in a position to tell okay yes sir ah uh, yes sir okay sir okay ah uh, yes sir i have one question finally we are clear that sir sir your voice is breaking Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, finally, you have concluded that copper and vanadium, copper ninety-eight percent and two percent of vanadium is good for uh, uh, high resistance application, impact and other. Hmm. Uh? Yes, sir. How? 
sir uh, we have uh, done the, from the test we can uh, said that uh, got some numbers value numbers you got some values from the testing methodology you got some numbers so okay, based sir. on the number you are telling that this is correct uh, highest value how it is microscopically how do you say that these two elements are uh, two uh, one matrix and other reinforcement influenced and how it gives the strength that we need simply we are putting that machinery and getting the result and and that quantify value some numbers you can yes, say that this is the highest what is the microscopic area involved involved with the vanadium and uh, uh, that gives the strength of the material that you can explain what is the mechanism okay sir okay anyway good right ah okay thank you sir ah uh, thank you sir हेलो सर आम आ Good afternoon, everyone. I am Krishna Murthy. I am. I am going to present my project, the design and fabrication of CNC laser engraver. Uh, our abstract is uh, nowadays uh, CNC has a rapid growth in production field, and it is implemented in manufacturing and automation sectors. Uh, laser cutting is a subtractive manufacturing process that uses a laser beam to make cut on the surface of the workpiece. uh this this process is uh, mostly used to cut workpiece without any cutting tool and there is no any contact between the workpiece and the cutting tool and uh, the laser engraver uh, consists of uh, cnc arduino uno uh, step for motors uh, laser module and aluminum extrusions softwares like laser grbl is used to generate g codes and it is fed into arduino arduino uno Uh, to ensure safety a uh, laser protective casing is made protective casing is made using wood and to remove fumes do, during laser cutting a filter system is uh, fitted uh, this machine is uh, flexible weightless and easy to work and engineering principles the laser beam is uh, initially generated by using a principle of uh, stimulated emission of electromagnetic radiation the laser cutting works on the principle of uh, wave precision cutting it is nothing but a high intense laser beam heats the surface of the material to its melting point and cuts the and leaving an edge with a high quality surface finish the instructions uh, are given to the machine by using uh, g codes the g codes are generated by using uh, laser grbl softwares and the pc gives instruction to the arduino uno via usb cable uh, through a language called g codes and m codes the cnc shield and stepper motor controls the position of the stepper drive and the feed rate uh, this is our uh, 3d model of our laser and driver and this is assembled view and this is the various views and this is the amount of uh, laser power required to engrave and cut various materials and this is our uh, fabricator project and this is a laser casing and this is a engraver full sub machine and this is the engraved uh, our output uh, we have uh, engraved in uh, cardboard uh, plywood and uh, uh, acrylic sheet
Uh, this is uh, acrylic sheet and this is uh, plywood. And advantages. Advantages of laser cutting are uh, flexible precision, repeatability, speed, uh, fast effective and uh, automation. The laser cutting does not require any change of cutting tool like uh, conventional method. Uh, accuracy is one of the primary advantages of laser cutting. Uh, laser cutting is fast and uh, automatic than other conventional machines. Conclusion Laser cutting with safety aid is a machine that uses laser power Arduino controller to make cut on the materials. The unique features of laser is uh, cutting repeatability, contactless cutting. There is no chance of cutting tool replacement tool wear and tear as like uh, conventional method uh, to ensure safety uh, protective casing and to eliminate fumes generated uh, laser cutting. The filter system is suited with uh, to exhaust all fumes. And this is our reference and websites uh, we referred. And thank you. Mr. Murthy. Yes, sir. Um, uh, this uh, entire uh, engraving is fabricated uh, by your team? Yes, sir. By two teams, sir. Me. Okay. Okay. How you are generating that laser source? Sir, we bought a laser module, sir. Okay. Oh. And we fitted. No. Oh. So, uh, what is the total cost of that setup? How much uh, you spent for it? Sir, around 20,000. 20,000. Do you have any uh, working video of that? Sir, it is available on a laptop, sir. Another person is coming. Oh, 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 oh. oh. You are from uh, which institution? Sir, Ramco. Oh, same, same Ram college, okay. Okay, uh, what is the maximum depth of cut that you can give uh, in this setup? Sir, we achieved a 6 mm sir, in acrylic sheet. Okay, okay. So, how do you give the, uh, uh, the pattern of cut? Say, for example, I want to cut some uh, uh, specific dimension. How you feed in? You, you feed in through uh, any CAD software yeah. or... Sir, that is a separate software, the laser GRBL, sir. Okay. We need okay. to give input. Okay. Laser GRBL. Yes, sir. Laser GRBL. Okay. 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 So, what is your plan after fabricating a particular uh, uh, setup? Which made sir. you to design? Which Which made you fabricate this laser engraving machine. What is the motive of this work? Sir, I saw YouTube videos and I like it. Okay, so you are going to become an entrepreneur? Sir, no sir. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you sir. Uh, so, uh, Yes, sir. Have you, sir, Krishnamurti, sir, have you verified uh, whether uh, um, uh, market water the laser in river available? Have you verified it? Yes, sir. The machine is available, sir, but that uh, filter and casing is not available, sir. So we Can added that. Can you tell the best laser and river machine's name? Sir, I don't know, sir. Uh, yes, next presentation is Prabhagar Alagwell. Are you there, sir? Prabhagar Alagwell is there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prabhagar? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You started your presentation. Now we can, we can give only five minutes for your presentation. You tell yes, sir. Your yes. uh, core part of the work and uh, uh, conclusion, sir. Okay. Proceed. You can share your okay, video. Now I start the main presentation. Good afternoon to one and all present here. My project topic is 
Analysis of mechanical and microstructural characteristics of stainless steel and in colony nickel based alloy for dissimilar metals. Sir, can you hear me, sir? Yes, here. Uh, you have presentation, PPT? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can share the PPT, sir. PPT, sir. Visible, sir? No, not visible. No, not visible. Sir, if the presentation is visible? No. Do you know the procedure for presentation, sir? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, then you do it. Yes, now it is coming, sir. Visible, sir? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Now you start. Okay. My project topic is analysis of mechanical and microstructural characteristics of stainless steel and in colony nickel based alloy for dissimilar nasal welds. This is the main theme of to join the two dissimilar metals by using laser weld to analysis the mechanical and the microstructural characteristics. This is the main theme of the project. By using this laser beam welding to join the metals then analysis. By using NDIAC laser if the NDIAC is stands for India ND means neodium then yog means yttrium aluminium garnet this type of laser by use is used to join them metals then we have a characteristics of that metal laser type example type it is a four type of solid state laser then active medium is India laser then piping method, optical piping is employed for piping actions. These are the characteristics we have followed then to complete that. Then methodology of the methodology of the project of it is then to find the two, two different materials, then to analysis and to correct the laser welds. After that, we select the which type of laser then to join and analysis then after that we have conclude the analysis then and this is the example welded plate model by using solid work to design then by using the methodology of Takuchi analysis to identify the step by step procedure by in their following project. The following parameters are input in the ANOVA analysis table to following them and the completed project. After that ANOVA input table, we have to find the result. This is the original metal analyzing tensile, tensile test before and after conducting test. Then harness value will finding Example, we are taking three type of weld bends. We are finding the harness value in the 500 grams. After that, we are, con we are finding the ANOVA table results. We have, we have uh, following are in the table sum of squares like sum of squares, degrees of freedom, p value and mean square value like that wise. Then this is are the used in the example of boiler to boiler, boiler walls by manufacturing the two different materials is used to nothing, no transfer the heat from inside to outside. Because the boiler is produced in the high temperature, is used to in that boiler. Now I conclude the project. The two different materials, like in colony, is like that. 
combination of nickel aluminium alloy then stainless steel it's having produced the high good mechanical properties then we have to find the laser wells we have giving good properties and the metal then after thank you thank you sir sir yes 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 sir where you are uh, having the setup uh, laser weld setup mr prabhakar yes sir yes sir where you are having the setup the so outsource in the internal no, internal college will so outsource other college sir we are going other college then testing in which college you have used uh, you uh, may utilize this resource from which college sir this from which college you got this facility and that you have used for your experimental analysis can you name the sir, college sir that's i know my project team was going sir project team you are also one of the project right sir yes sir yes sir i would learn sir not memory sir know all this where you where where you people are working yes sir yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. you should know na because yes sir yes sir some of the resources which are all available in uh, in uh, um, uh, very rare places ah um, yes sir um, i know this type of welding which is available in iit madras and uh, phg tech and uh, um, uh, wri welding research institute uh, uh, tiruchi So that is why, out of curiosity, I am asking where where you are using all these things. So yes, sir, yes, sir. What is the application of uh, your uh, work? Where you are going to apply this? Sir, so that's the, by using boiler boiler, sir. The boiler rolls is manufacturing here by two different molds metals. Okay. Which is used to to resist the temperature, sir. Inside the temperature. It's a uh, very good work, but uh, you people have to explore some more information. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ah, uh, Mr. Prabhakar. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, now uh, you have shown the ANOVA result. Yes, sir. I think you have to check it whether uh, the results is are okay. Once okay. again, you go and uh, run it, run and uh, get the results. Uh, I think uh, some more. Uh, i found uh, i find some i mean your result uh, somewhere in the uh, abnormal you can check check it once again an over table okay sir okay sir so, and uh, one more thing is uh, now uh, have you done any mechanical properties analysis no sir uh, yes yes that heat affected zone uh, ah yes sir uh, Why the hardness value is higher? Your base metal other than heat affected zone. Yes, sir. Heat affected zone, you yes. are getting a hardness value higher than the base metal. How? He, sir, sorry, sir. Heat affected zone. Yes, sir. H I Z. Ah, sir. Yes, sir. In a PPT, H I Z heat affected zone. Yes, sir. Having more hardness than base yes. metal hardness. Yes, sir. How? Which is Which is the boiler? Like example, the boiler, boiler, sir. It produces the high temperature, sir. Okay, why it is higher hardness value that you want? Do you know? By in the boiler, by producing the inside temperature and the high inside temperature is high. Due to that, we are calculating. Okay, you have to do more work on this, yeah. you got to get some literature and study whether our results are correct or not okay okay so you go do it in okay. more literature you sir then then only you can conclude it your work is correct or not then, yes sir uh, okay anyway thank you thank you for your presentation okay thank you sir we'll go to next uh, presentation uh, uh, i request uh, mr jabin uh,
மெயின் <laughs> Uh, reinforcement and uh, vanadium with various percentages like uh, 0%, 0.51, 1.52% have been used. Uh, it is reinforced with the primary copper. Uh, after reinforcing it uh, by using stir casting, we have taken uh, various uh, uh, characteristics uh, like FDR, XRD uh, and optical microscopy. In addition to that, after taking all those things, we have also done uh, some corrosion testing. Uh, by both the electrochemical workstation as well as by weight loss method so uh, after doing such kind of things we have come to a conclusion that with the addition of uh, vanadium it has uh, reduced uh, i mean it has uh, inhibited the rate of corrosion so so these are a few of the literatures uh, which i have taken and uh, the properties of copper and vanadium is uh, uh, listed here so uh, the grain size uh, copper is actually used as a rod so there was no grain size vanadium it was a particle in nature it is uh, its average size is less than 44 micron and the density for copper is 8.96 and for vanadium it is 6.11 gram per centimeter cube and the melting point of copper is 1083 and for vanadium it is uh, 1890 and as i already told uh, Uh, stir casting is one of the most economical method so uh, i have used the stir casting method uh, to uh, to uh, make this component so in this uh, copper is initially filled in a furnace uh, it the furnace is heated to about 1200 degrees centigrade and vanadium is slowly added to it at a, a fewer rate and uh, by varying the percentage of vanadium different composite uh, samples were uh, made and after uh, after uh, producing the samples i have uh, tested its density by using the also tested for its porosity uh, then i have compared both the results uh, what is the theoretical density by rule of mixture and the experiment density by using archimedes principle and by comparing both the things uh, i have also found the porosity value so these are all the results uh, we can see that for pure copper uh, the density is higher and uh, when you add the vanadium content the density is getting reduced as as we know that uh, when compared to uh, copper the density of vanadium is uh, low it is around 6 point something but for copper it was 8.9 so that's why the density is getting reduced uh, and uh, in addition to that we have uh, next we have gone for uh, xrd so xrd is for the confirmation of uh, what are the elements present in the particular uh, composition so from this uh, we have uh, in order to give a confirmation so we have uh, done the xrd and found this uh, values by using the jcbds database we have uh, confirmed the uh, elements present in the particular uh, sample which we have uh, done by using stir casting process and after that i have uh, gone for this corrosion testing the corrosion testing first i have uh, what i have used is this electrochemical or station in which uh, three different kinds of electrodes are there this uh, in this the platinum is used as a counter electrode calomel is uh, used as a reference and uh, the working plate which whatever uh, composite specimen which i have uh, uh, produced using stir casting is used uh, as the working electrode so by using the three electrodes i have done this electrochemical oxidation and after that i have got this result this uh, graph is actually between potential uh, with uh, log of i by a that is uh, current versus area so based upon this uh, i have done this uh, electrochemical corrosion test for all the five different samples and from this i have found that uh, the value for uh, copper 2 percentage vanadium and 2 percentage vanadium is added with copper it has uh, greater corrosion resistance when compared uh, with other uh, uh, compositions in addition to this i have also gone for weight loss method this is the normal method uh, usually people do uh, this is actually uh, with the four normality uh, hdso4 solution Uh, we are just this is a normal traditional method we will just put a small piece of uh, uh, this specimen which we have manufactured by using stir casting method in that particular uh, beaker uh, 
so after one day 24 hours uh, what is the weight loss so like that for 12 days i have taken the values and i have found that uh, for pure copper the rate of loss of its weight is uh, keep on getting increased and uh, but for uh, when uh, when vanadium is added to this copper the uh, weight loss is getting uh, reduced that's what i uh, came to a conclusion so from both of this i have concluded that uh, uh, when vanadium is get, uh, getting increased when the co concentration of vanadium is getting increased uh, the weight loss is also getting reduced so uh, i think it is one of the best method for reducing the corrosion or uh, inhibiting the corrosion so that's all these are a few of the references which i have uh, taken from uh, taken the literatures and uh, i have uh, done my uh, research thank you uh, sir can you please go to your uh, one of the slide which is uh, uh, showing the xrd part yes sir Sir, uh, uh, can you explain uh, on on what mode you are telling that uh, the peaks are uh, having the lattice one one one, the next peak is two zero zero, and the last one is two two zero, and uh, uh, the first and the the last one is one one zero and two one one. Yes, sir. Actually, it is uh, based upon the crystal plane. Uh, the orientation mm. of uh, crystals. So actually, how I have taken the values, uh, we are having a JCPDS database. So uh, already, uh, when you uh, when we get the result, we normally get the peak at what degree the maximum value which we are getting. Normally, we will get the maximum value. So uh, we already know that copper and vanadium is only there. So based upon the copper and vanadium, uh, we will know the peaks at what uh, at whichever peak the copper and vanadium will produce the maximum uh, intensity, uh, which reflects uh, maximum. So that value we will check with the JCPDS database, and in that JCPDS database there will be the crystallographic plane at what plane the at what angle the plane will be there, uh, the D value. So based upon that only for this particular theta, what will be that uh, crystallographic plane? Like that uh, I have uh, plotted. Okay. What is the database, sir? JCPDS, sir. JCPDS. JCBDS. JCPDS, sir. JCPDS. Okay, okay. Uh, is it uh, openly? It's a uh, open source, or uh, it is available it's, only with? It's, it's open source only, sir. It's open source only, but uh, we we need to have that software, sir. It's actually I took it from Mepco College, sir. They are having this okay. JCPDS database, but frequently I think they have to update that JCPDS database. Okay, all chemists uh, they may have is it? Yes, yes, yes. They have this uh, JCPDS database. Okay, 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 okay. So it's open source. So even if you Google it out, you can get that. Uh, no, sir. Uh, I I don't know about. I am not sure about uh, whether it is open source or not. Uh, okay. But uh, I have heard that it is open source, but I have not searched in Google, sir. But uh, most of the people have told that it is open source only. Okay, fine. Thank you. And then previous slide, please. No, uh, that uh, porosity is exactly. Uh, here, uh, how you are, how you are uh, finding out that porosity percentage, sir? This is actually this is the formula, sir. Theoretical bundle divided by theoretical value, sir. Mm -hmm. By using this only, you're finding out porosity. Okay, so, <laughs> so that's a, a basic. Uh, I have one basic doubt uh, that uh, uh, theoretical you are finding out one density. Yes, sir. Uh, right, based on the weight percentage and the uh, uh, mass yes, fraction of it. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and uh, experimentally you are finding out one density. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, these two are uh, having some errors. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because uh, there will be some, uh, as we are doing stir casting process, definitely there will be some uh, internal stress. Internal stress in the sense, uh, some blow holes may be there, impurities may yes, be yes. there. So, uh, the, uh, will the difference of these two values will give you porosity? That's my question. Yeah, uh, yes, sir. Definitely it will give, sir. Because uh, 
uh, when we theoretically calculate the value, the density must be around 8920. But actually, the density value is uh, because it is around 8380. So definitely, it is all because of this uh, manufacturing process. Somewhere, somehow, uh, some problems may be there. Some internal area which may not have filled, as it is a stir-casting process. Uh, there, there is a probability of uh, getting such kind of uh, problems. Mm -hmm. Because that that point, I am not convinced. That's why, and I am not convinced in the sense uh, it doesn't mean that I am uh, I am finding the error. Because uh, when when I am listening, I also should take some some information from your presentation. That is the uh, uh, main. Um, density we are calculating by using Archimedes principles. Sir. Yeah, I know that. Uh, yes, yes. Normally, uh, the bean beaker we will put the. Yeah, I know that. I know. That, I know. I don't know. A theoretical, yes, of course. But yes, yes. will these two differences will give you the porosity which is present inside the component because uh, uh, theoretical always is going to be the higher value I know higher value. experimental is going to be the actual value. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, I I personally feel that uh, yeah. there should be some other method or you should try upon some other method in order to find out the porosity uh, to yes, uh, to, to confident. Uh, what we can do is we can uh, have take a sem image. Uh, by oh. using MATLAB, we can find out uh, uh, what are the areas in which porosity is there in that surface, in that section. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by using that also, we can do. Uh, that is something, uh, I think it is uh, related to some softwares. That also mm -hmm. we can do. By using that also, uh, based upon that, we can take it as a whole as a 100 percentage. So in that 100 percentage, what is the percentage of uh, porosity? That's also possible. Okay. Okay. But when we do this rule of mixtures, we used to uh, consider uh, as a void volume of void also will take in picture. Okay, okay. So uh, I think that you are not doing, I believe. So that is why you are taking that as the total density. Okay, anyhow. So thank you very much for uh, for me to learn some good information from your PPT. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jabin, sir. Uh... You go to EA's plot, sir, Tafel plot. In Tafel plot, uh, uh, whether uh, charge resistance or not, uh, resistance, how do you find it with where the corrosion resistance is low? How do you find it? Whether you adjusted the graph or the graph is abnormal. Then you adjusted the graph. I, I didn't get anything from this graph. You can can you explain it? Sir, actually, it is uh, it is the graph which I got from electrochemical workstation. Sir, there is no modification. I have not even touched uh, in this. Whatever graph which I have got, I have presented here. So actually, how can we find out from here is actually the right side, whatever uh, the graph we are uh, seeing is uh, the cathode phase. And the left side, uh, which uh, the graph, uh, it is actually the anode phase. So what normally in electrochemical field, there will be three electrodes and we will be supplying the voltage from minus one to plus one. So at once the voltage is reverses. What happens is the corrosion uh, uh, will get inhibited. So what happens is by using this method, we are testing at what rate it is turning from anode to cathode. So that is the point at which we can find out the corrosion is happening. If the if the if the if the lower base point, that corner point, which we can see one uh, uh, orange color line, vertical line, and another one blue color line. So actually, three of the uh, co components uh, line is on left side of zero, and uh, two of the components that uh, point, I core point. I mean that uh, uh, potential point is on the right side. So whichever is having uh, more potential, uh, it is normally said to be high corrosion resistance. So on that basis, uh, I have done this. But after doing this, uh, also I have uh, I had some uh, doubts regarding this because uh, two of the lines are getting coincided on the same thing. Uh, copper 1.5 uh, percentage vanadium and two uh, two vanadium is coinciding on the same uh, line. So what I do, did is I I have gone to the next traditional method that is actually this weight loss method. So in this weight weight loss method, I have got a clear idea. So whenever the percentage of vanadium is getting increased, definitely there is uh, some uh, inhibition and in corrosion. 
so by using this method these two methods i have uh, come i have come to a, come to a conclusion that uh, whatever i have done is uh, correct sir in weight loss method also how do you find the corrosion resistance rate what is the formula to find it whether you have used any formula to find uh, uh, corrosion resistance because we, we understand that the, based on the weight relaxation there is there may be some corrosion but there is a standard formulas to available for how how, how they corrosion resistant in terms of year year now how much mm per year have you done it any calculation and one more question is that uh, whether you have done any nacus plot that yes itself uh, nacus plot you have done it or not Uh, yes, sir. Uh, first, regarding that weight loss method, uh, what I have done is uh, I have prepared uh, five different samples of same dimension, same area. Same. Uh, I mean, the weight may be different, but the dimensions are all kept as constant. Uh, length and breadth is constant. So what I have done is I have uh, dipped that particular uh, specimen uh, into the HTSO4 for solution, four normality HTSO4 solution for uh, one day. What happened is uh, the weight has got. Uh, dissolved in that uh, uh, in that uh, uh, getting uh, losing its weight uh, in a drastic level when compared to the other so that's how uh, i have uh, uh, done this weight loss method. this is normal uh, normal intuition there is no uh, big uh, deal uh, behind that and uh, regarding that uh, electrochemical oxidation uh, that plot actually i am not aware of this uh, i am aware of this plot but i have not drawn uh, that uh, accused plot uh, here so it is there, but I have not uh, uh, incorporated that. But uh, it can be done. It can also be done, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for a nice presentation. So what paper number, sir? Yes, sir. Paper number that. Uh... Uh, paper number, yes, sir. One minute, sir. Uh, seven. I think seventy-five. I think seventy-five, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Seventy-five, sir. Paper number. Uh, sir, uh, Logan, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. This is our last presentation, sir, already completed. Uh, can, you, can you can uh, summarize it, sir? Oh, whole session. Can you give some summarization for? Uh, sir, uh, some three more uh, papers are to be, sir. Uh, that is completed in the internal session, sir. Parallel session. Oh, fine, fine, fine. Oh, one second, sir. Okay. Sir, loan answer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I am, I am coming, sir. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, Good evening to one and all uh, gathered here. Um, it's a great uh, moment uh, uh, to look into a uh, few papers. Near about uh, uh, ten papers we witnessed. Uh, myself, uh, um, um, along with me, uh, Professor. Uh, Suresh Kumar and uh, on the parallel session, Mr. Lakshmanan and uh, Mr. Maharajan of uh, RIT group. And um, uh, I believe personally, this is a very great effort uh, taken by uh, Ramco Institute of Technology, Department of Mechanical Engineering to conduct such a uh, wonderful uh, uh, international conference that to uh, managing everything online. So that's a great work. Uh, and uh, I could see how meticulously the people planned uh, each and every work and how cordially they were conducting the event. Uh, I need to appreciate uh, all of the faculty involved. And uh, uh, coming to the organization, uh, uh, one uh, Mr. Prabhuram and uh, Jabinath, uh, they are all the people and along with the Sujin and Vigneshwaran, they were doing a very nice coordination. And uh, uh, especially with respect to the participation of the people, uh, barring one or two because of the connectivity, many people were uh, uh, prompt in making up their presentation. And uh, it is a, a real flawless uh, show that I can say, uh, starting from uh, uh, 2.50 uh, till around... Uh, uh, for uh, 5 30 it's a flawless show and uh, i learned uh, so many things uh, from the presentation at the same time 
uh, what are all the comments uh, uh, given by the uh, uh, the chairs of this session uh, you people uh, please take it in the right sense and uh, uh, please continue this type of uh, uh, participation wherever uh, the event is being organized and you people have to come up with new new papers and you have to present and you should improvise and uh, 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 i should uh, thank in this uh, management of ramco institute of technology for conducting uh, such a wonderful event uh, during this pandemic and i should appreciate uh, the visionary uh, of uh, those people in bringing out such a online platform wherein we can share our knowledge and we can learn on a mutual basis and uh, i personally thank each and every one of uh, the organization organizers participants and the management for uh, giving me this opportunity to come inside your platform thank you very much sir thank you very much sir sir on behalf of ramco institute of technology department of mechanical engineering i thank you very much uh, you sir for uh, this acceptation of our invitation to join as a chairperson in this uh, international uh, web conference on uh, smart engineering technologies and uh, during this pandemic period we will we, we are very uh, happy for accepting and joining as uh, a chairperson in this session sir and also i thank uh, for your uh, valuable comments to the presenters uh, which will be definitely helpful to the presenters and also participants sir uh, you want to say thank you very much sir and also, it's it's my it's my pleasure being a part of your work sir thank you very much yes yes sir thank you very much sir and also i thank dr p suresh kumar sir uh, for the uh, act as a chairperson in this session and thank you very much sir thank you I formally conclude the session. Uh, thank you, Admin Sir. So the participants, uh, if you are give your uh, if you are not giving your feedback, please please kindly respond for your feedback. Uh, if it is uh, over means uh, I conclude the session. Uh, the tomorrow the session will start shortly at 11:05 the session and the, the before that we will have a invite uh, talk at uh, 10 o'clock please all the participants uh, kind uh, join in this invite talk and also for the sessions thank you very much